So in the previous video, we talked about where immune cells are found in the body. And the locations that we typically talk about are in the bloodstream, inside organs and tissues, and in the lymphatic system. So I just want to briefly introduce the lymphatic system now, even though the main focus of the lymphatic system, what goes on there, B cells and T cells being activated, we won't cover until units two and three, but we should introduce the lymphatic system here. Uh, it's a system of organs and tissues that uh, will allow lymphocytes to um, engage with pathogens and activate. So when we talk about the lymphatic system, uh, what structures, what organs are we talking about? So there are primary uh, lymphoid tissues, or, or sometimes they're called central lymphoid tissues. These are the bone marrow and the thymus. And the reason they're called primary is that's where immune cells um, uh, originate and undergo development. So when we talk in unit two and three about the thymus and the, about the bone marrow, what goes on there, we'll see that B cells and T cells undergo their training in those organs and tissues. So B cells and T cells are lymphocytes. They're going to develop and mature in primary lymphoid tissues. Those are the thymus and the bone marrow. The uh, lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, will travel via the bloodstream and they will enter secondary lymphoid tissues. Sometimes we call them peripheral lymphoid tissues. And these are the lymph nodes that you commonly associate with swelling um, that occurred during an infection. So all the lymph nodes around the body, um, those are secondary lymphoid tissues or peripheral lymphoid tissues. And this is where lymphocytes will patrol and look for pathogens. So when we talk about the lymph nodes, there are these structures all throughout the body um, that have lymph vessels leading to them. And we'll see in the next slide uh, the structure of lymph vessels and the flow of the lymph from uh, tissues into the lymph nodes. So the lymphatics, or the lymphatic vessels, uh, those are going to be tubes. They're one-directional one, di they're one tubes. They have valves in them. They allow fluid to flow in one direction. And these tubes will drain fluid and pathogens from tissues and lead to lymph nodes. And that's where you're going to find B cells and T cells uh, looking for pathogens. So um, we're going to see, again, traveling of cells from the blood, to lymphoid tissues, to lymph vessels, and then back and forth. So again, you got to keep this in mind about cells traveling and moving throughout the body. Again, most of this is going to be uh, required for you to know in uh, units two and three, but we should introduce it here now. Um, there are some specialized lymphoid tissues, which we should name here because we're going to encounter those names uh, fairly soon. So lymph um, nodes in certain parts of the body are given special names. So in the gastrointestinal system around the intestines, um, pathogens that are filtered into those lymph nodes uh, in the intestines, um, those lymph nodes are referred to as GALT, gastro or GI associated uh, lymphoid tissues. So they're basically lymph nodes where you're going to find B cells and T cells um, and these uh, nodes are associated with the intestines, the gastrointestinal tract. So when you're eating something, um, some of that stuff that you're eating it goes into these lymphoid tissues, the GALT, and B cells and T cells will dig around in there and see if anything in there is pathogenic. Um, there are lymphoid tissues associated with the lungs called the BALT, bronchial associated lymphoid tissues. Again, lymph nodes, lymph tissues, that will take in things that you breathe into your lungs, uh, get processed and sent into these lymphoid tissues, the BALT, P cells and T cells are gonna be digging around there to see if anything is pathogenic. Uh, there's a, a, a general um, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue, so that is MALT. So when you think about your mucosa, so that would be the upper respiratory tract, it might be the reproductive tract, so that's generalized. Um, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. Again, um, you're going to have pathogens taken in via your mucosal membranes sent into these specialized lymph nodes called the MALT, and B cells and T cells will dig around in there and see if they can identify anything that's pathogenic. So, like I said, the lymphatic system is more of a focus of units two and three, but we'll introduce it now. Um, I want to do a little drawing for you, uh, again, to get you thinking about where in the blood, where in the body, uh, we're going to be focusing on in terms of where pathogens encounter um, 
where the immune cells encounter pathogens and the effects on the body. So I've, got, I've drawn four locations here. I drew a blood vessel, and there's some cells in there. I've drawn some skin and the underlying connective tissue below the, uh, ep the epithelial layers of the skin. And I've drawn some lymphatic system, specifically a lymph vessel, which would carry interstitial fluid from the tissue uh, and through the lymphatic vessel to a lymph node. So when we talk about cells, again, you've got to think about where are these cells located. And we'll talk more in detail about each of these types of cells and where they're located normally before an infection and if they do anything after an infection has been detected. So for example, here, you'll see I've drawn some neutrophils in the bloodstream. Inside tissues, I've drawn, drawn dendritic cells and macrophages. And inside the lymph nodes, I've drawn some B cells and some T cells. So we've got different immune cells in different parts of the body. And if you recall, there's fluid in your tissues, and that fluid moves from the blood vessels. There are microscopic pores that allow fluid to move from the blood into tissues. Some of that fluid moves back into the blood, but the majority of it actually uh, flows into the lymphatic vessel that drains into a lymph node, and in the lymph node you're going to have immune cells such as B cells and T cells looking at what's drained from your uh, tissues to see if anything there is a pathogen. So here's a normal healthy individual, no infection. Well, let's say there's a damage to the skin, and let's say uh, a bacteria has gotten in the tissue of under the skin. Right? So the immune cells are going to detect an infection, and we'll start to learn about that soon. Once they detect an infection, uh, we talked previously about inflammation. Changes are going to occur uh, in these tissues, and one change that will occur to the blood vessels is increased vascular permeability, as I've drawn there. And now, fluid will uh, rush into the tissue, the tissue will swell, that's edema, or two more. And one of the effects of this is going to be to drain uh, the pathogen through the lymphatic vessel into a lymph node, and that's where you're going to have cells like B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes uh, look at that pathogen and try to recognize it so it can mount an attack. So we've got different parts of the body working together to recognize an infection, to detect and uh, activate against the infection. Um, sometimes immune cells will travel via the lymphatic system. So dendritic cells, for example, we'll learn about them when we talk about T cells. They are phagocytes that live in your tissues and when they detect a pathogen, they will phagocytose it, carry that pathogen to a lymph node where the dendritic cells will present the pathogen to T cells, for example. Uh, so sometimes immune cells are going to be moving uh, throughout the body. Uh, the neutrophil, you can see in the bloodstream, will move from the blood into the tissues. I really should have drawn that here. I might as well draw it right now. There's a neutrophil moving from the bloodstream into the tissues to help phagocytose path pathogens. So immune cells are going to be in different parts of the body. Immune cells are going to be moving from one part to the other. So I just want to introduce that concept now so that when we talk about each immune cell, cell in particular, uh, you'll be comfortable with this notion of different locations in the body uh, being patrolled by different cells and immune cells may be moving from one part to the other.